For the next few minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the next section, section 2 of the magnetic field, the second section of the electromagnetics course that we're learning so much about. In this second section, we're going to go through the study of the magnetic field over these five topics. First introductory topic, where we will analyze what are the sources of the magnetic field, we will continue analyzing what is the magnetic force that will act on charges that are in motion when this movement occurs within the space where a magnetic field has been defined. We will continue with the analysis of these magnetic forces but now on currents then we will analyze and see how to calculate the magnetic field that can create moving charges and electric currents. We will finish analyzing a very visual experience and applying all that we have learned. Starting therefore with the first lesson of this magnetic field, what we are going to do is to analyze the origin of the magnetic field, seeing that we have natural magnets and that we can also make magnets from certain metals. We will see what are the magnetic field lines, remembering how were the lines of the electric field that we were studying in section number one. We know that magnetic poles exist. We are familiar with them when we play with magnets. I have brought a magnet and then we will show the effects of those magnetic poles and we will see what different types of magnetic field sources we can generate as well. During the first section we were already analyzing that in electromagnetism what we are going to do is to analyze two parts or is encompassed by two parts. One part of the study of the electric field and another part of the study of the magnetic field. Already in section one we analyzed electrostatics that studied the charges at rest and electric fields that did not depend at all on time. And now what we are going to do is to focus on magnetostatics, that is to study the magnetic fields that do not depend on time. There are many everyday phenomenon that allow us to come into contact with the effects of the magnetic field in many applications of electromechanical devices when we are playing with magnets, which is quite attractive, especially if we have small pieces of metal, iron, and now we will see it, or if we were lucky enough to observe northern lights. An aurora borealis is nothing more than the effect that arises when part of the solar mass is ejected and comes to interact with the terrestrial magnetosphere. What we observe then is the luminescence of particles from the sun that reach our atmosphere and are seen as those luminous curtains so showy. The origin of magnetic phenomenon was already known since ancient Greece by the Greeks since they knew a natural magnet, magnetite, which is an iron oxide, and that this stone, this mineral, had the property of being able to attract small pieces of iron, small pieces of metal, iron or steel. In addition, they observed that the attraction that these minerals experienced, now we will see, here I have brought a small one for us to see this magnetite, because it offered that interaction was governed by certain field lines, those field lines, as it happens a little bit with the positive charges and with the negative charges, it turns out that there was a part of the magnet that attracted the positive charges and another part of that magnet. What it did was to repel them, what it did was to repel them, what it did was to repel them. Those interactions, in addition, could be studied using compasses. The compasses we know that they are formed by magnetized needles and that they are oriented according to the terrestrial magnetic field. Our Earth, the truth, is that it is like a gigantic magnet. If we see the effects that are produced in the magnetosphere, what we have are like these field lines that indicate the trajectories of charged particles. And at the end, if we analyze those trajectories, what is happening is that our Earth is behaving as if it were a magnet with the South Pole oriented towards the geographic North Pole and the North Pole of the Earth's magnet towards the North Pole. Of the Earth's magnet towards the geographic South Pole, this happens because of how the magnets were named according to how the attraction was. Of course, we had the interaction of the globe, the magnetosphere, or the magnet formed by the Earth. And those interactions gave the name to the poles. I'm going to show you here some elements that I have brought so that we can see as a classroom experience the effects that we can observe. Here what we see is a series of magnetized needles that are all held by their center but with freedom to rotate. If a magnet approaches them, they will quickly orient themselves according to the interaction that they are undergoing. Look at them. By the orientation of the little arrows, I can tell if I am with the North Pole or the South Pole near, 
of these magnetized needles. If I place another magnet in the vicinity, if I place another magnet in the vicinity, notice that we can see the configuration of the magnetic field lines that are being the environment that we have around these magnets. I have also brought, and so we can see this natural mineral, the magnetite, and we can see that it is a natural magnet. If I simply bring it close to this compass, we can see that it is a natural magnet. To this compass, we have how quickly it is influenced by the orientation of the magnet, and I'm able to disturb the orientation of the magnetized needle, the orientation of the magnetic needle of my compass. And we can also play and see the curious effects that I can obtain. Here I have in a little box a few iron filings, and if I bring my magnet close to it, I can see how those little iron filings quickly orient themselves to follow the magnetic field lines. Let's continue to study the effects of the magnetic field that we know about. Remembering what we saw in the electric field, we know that the lines of the electric field, that what they did was to allow us to study the interactions that were suffered due to charges in space, those field lines left the positive charges and went to negative charges. They were open lines. In the case of magnets, those lines are not open. They are closed lines and leave what would become the North Pole and enter the South Pole. This means that whenever I have a magnet, I will always have two poles defined, North Pole and South Pole. But I am never able to separate the poles. If I were to divide a magnet in some way, if we split it in half, the result we get is two magnets two new magnets with their two north poles and their two south poles. The sources of the natural magnetic field, so we have them in the magnets. If I have iron filings, we can easily see how they are oriented, and we've seen it here. And it turns out that those sources of the magnetic field besides the magnets, either natural or manufactured by us, it turns out that we can also manufacture magnets, and the person who really put in connection and saw the great relationship that existed between the electric field and the magnetic field was in the 1820 Hans Christian Oerster. He made a very famous experiment and what he did was to pass a current through a wire and what he observed is that when the current passed through the wire, a magnetized needle acquired a new orientation in space. It was like it was responding to a new magnetic field that was being formed. This same experience of passing a current can be experienced if instead of a straight wire, what we have is a loop, a closed circuit, and we will see that we also form field lines, or if we have a solenoid, many loops together, as we would have in this configuration here. I have brought this experience for us to see it because it is a very colorful effect. Let's analyze it. If we come to our work table, I have also brought a coil that would be made up of many turns, and we are going to see how, if in principle, this coil, I don't have it powered by any current. And for that, what I do is I open the circuit and I have here a power supply and I connect the coil. Observe the compass needle, what it's going to experience as we pass the current, as it comes into connection. Quickly, we see that something is happening. We have a new orientation for the North Pole. If I disconnect, the orientation changes, then something is happening in the environment that makes the magnetized needle interact. So I am generating a magnetic field by passing current through my coil. Let's finish. This study of the magnetic field, reviewing all the ideas that have arisen. We have seen the origin of the magnetic field. The natural origin would be from minerals such as magnetite, but we can also create it ourselves from permanent magnets, from metals such as iron, we can turn it into a permanent magnet or steel. We always have to keep in mind that I will always have the existence of the two magnetic poles in any magnet. And finally, thanks to the experiences of Wester, have been put in contact and established the relationship between the electric field and the magnetic field. We will continue in future presentations.